Hi there, Andrew Bell here with you. Plenty of economic news has been reported over the past few weeks and certainly continues to create a challenging picture, especially for the housing market. Who knows where interest rates are going to go? The substantial increase in new jobs saw a decline, of course, in unemployment, which takes the pressure off a need for a rate drop. Yet a significant jump in insolvencies and warnings about many other businesses tinkering on the edge of insolvency paints an economy that's contracting and hence calls for interest rates drops. With Australian Aussie wages growing at the fastest rate in 15 years and with tax cuts due from the 1st of July, there's a reason to argue for a wait and see approach on interest rates. And of course, with the real estate prices still increasing month on month, there's yet another argument that interest rates should not be reduced anytime soon, or by any significant amount, so not to impact on inflation. So, who truly knows what's going to happen? We have some economists who are forecasting, predicting a rate drop as early as May of this year, and others, and perhaps the great majority, who say we won't see an interest rate drop until next year. They usually get, usually get a greater sort of consensus amongst them, but it's simply not happening in this particular cycle because the messages are so mixed. Yet when it comes to the real estate market, we know this. We're experiencing record population growth. The Australian Bureau of Statistics have announced just recently that we've tipped over 27 million people and that we're projected to reach somewhere between 29.2 and 30.8 million people in just the next eight years. Yet at the very same time, we're falling construction numbers, in fact, record low numbers. And even if somehow developers were inspired to increase building right now, it would be several years before we would see any of that supply come online. So our housing supply is going to continue to fall below our population growth, and as a result, put incredible pressure on real estate prices and rental prices. So it's no surprise we're hearing calls for the government to cut immigration. Yet we're in the catch-22 situation. Not only do we hear from the Australian Defence Force, and virtually every Australian police force, that recruiting is in decline and that they're understaffed, but we're also hearing from hospitals with a shortage of nurses and doctors. And in fact, we hear it just about right across all the spectrums of the economy that there's a need for more immigration to fill the skilled labour positions. But do you know what one of the major problems about our lack of housing construction is? It's a lack of skilled labour in the construction industry. Whether it's engineers or indeed specialised labourers from form workers through to concreters and all the other parts. Apart from the cost of money to fund developments, most builders will tell you that they're fearful to start a development because they can't find the labour force. Those that are in the construction industry are drawn to the safe and secure jobs that have been provided by government infrastructure spending, sucking away skilled labourers from the private sector. So whilst there are calls for a reduction in immigration by some, there's actually a need to not only maintain, but some would argue increase migration, but in a much more targeted way. There, of course, will always be debates about the composition of our immigration policy but there is a very justifiable argument to say that we need to tailor our immigration to fill the vital positions such as doctors, nurses, and as I've just pointed out, construction workers, in order to keep our economy growing, to house our people, provide the essential services. That's what is a real issue. To me, it seems to be a no-brainer to target our immigration to our greatest needs but it's sure not happening at present. A really big thanks to the 840 people who attended our Ray White Business Meets Ports luncheon on Friday the 22nd of March. The who's who of the Gold Coast community were there, business community, and so many of our leaders of our, our city were present to hear Anna Mears, the chef de mission for this year's Paris Olympic Games, who shared some incredible insights of what it takes to deal with all the challenges and adversity that comes with life as an athlete and it was so relevant to people in general. And of course, Harry Trigoboff, the legendary 91-year-old developer who through his developments have built over 80,000 apartments to provide homes for hundreds of thousands of Australians over the years. You could have heard a pin drop as Harry shared his life story, his insights into many aspects of a successful life, both 
personally and as a business. And not to mention we raised over 219,000 to provide essential rescue equipment for our volunteer surf lifesavers who keep our beaches safe for all of our tourists and all of our locals here on the Gold Coast. It truly was a breathtaking day. Well, we're into our autumn season now, and for those who are wanting to get their property sold prior to the end of this financial year, please reach out to us as we have a very special promotion coming up that you just don't want to miss. Now, as you look around the world, where else would you want to live than Australia at present? Let's count our blessings. Look forward to being with you in a couple of weeks.